Let's bring in former senior military intelligence officer Philip Ingram. Uh, hi, Philip. Uh, I mean, I think we should dismiss the possibility, uh, even the minor possibility, that Israel won't do anything. It will retaliate, and I think it's right to retaliate, as I just said. How, what country would accept 300 foreign missiles being fired at it in a blatant attack and just say, well, here's what we're going to do? Nothing. The people of that country will demand a response, and there will be one. So can I ask you the same question that I just asked our previous guest? What form do you think that retaliation will take? Well, I think your time hit it, hit it on the head. You know, the, the Israelis are in the... Uh, the, the, the process at the moment of trying to work out what is going to create maximum effect in telling Iran to back off and to stop arming the proxies that are causing Israel so much difficulty without forcing Iran to the next level of escalation. So there is this spectrum of activities that could happen. Direct attacks against Iran's nuclear program, that is the biggest um, concern of Israel and the international community as well. Iran will be trying to work its relationship with Vladimir Putin, I would expect, to get access to nuclear um, uh, capability. Putin is extremely worried that if things escalate, then his supply of Shahad 136 drones and other ammunition from Iran is going to dry up very quickly indeed. Um, and then we've got the Ir Iranian proxies. You know, they've traditionally been used to attack Israel uh, virtually on a daily basis with Hezbollah from Lebanon. Hamas is a, an Iranian proxy. And there's a number of others in Syria um, and er, Iraq. And we, of course, we've got the Houthis in Yemen who fired directly at Israel. So you know, Israel is just weighing things up at the moment, but there will be a response. How much of what is going on right now do you perceive to be a sort of almost prescriptive continuation of the October the 7th attacks? Because, uh, as we all know, Iran are the main backers, funders, uh, armors of Hamas, uh, as well as the Houthis and Hezbollah. And indeed, was sort of the finger was very much pointed at Tehran in terms of the choreography and uh, the curation of that uh, re really, you know, horrible and uh, horrific attack on Israel. So how much is this was uh, Iran wanting to turn up the volume as high as possible? And, and, and that's what they're still trying to do now. Well, again, it's very difficult. There's an old military adage that um, no plan ever survives first contact with the enemy. Um, and therefore, if Iran had planned all of this and planned the activity, it wouldn't have planned all of the options that, that, that are coming out at the moment. But it'll have a general playbook um, and it'll be trying to balance off causing Israel as much uh, disruption and have an effect on it as possible, but not stimulating as much to uh, get Western nations involved uh, and turn it into a regional conflict, because Iran knows that it can't win against um, uh, a war where the West is, is involved in it completely. However, we've got other players that are coming in. Vladimir Putin would love there to be a regional conflict that brings the West into focusing on the Middle East, because that would take the West away from focusing on what he's trying to do in Ukraine. And it's how much this is joined up is the really concerning bit. Um, and that's the thing that I think our um, uh, international intelligence agencies will be looking at very, very closely indeed and, and advising you know, the, Joe Biden advising Rishi Sunak, uh, and they will be putting the appropriate level of pressure onto Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, Philip, does Iran want conflict with uh, Israel? The reason I ask is that attack at the weekend was not unexpected. We knew they were going to re retaliate uh, for that attack on uh, their generals a couple of weeks ago in Iran. We knew something was going to happen. But the scale of it uh, was surprising. It was much larger than most people predicted, which would tend to indicate that Iran was deliberately trying to be provocative, that it wants some sort of fight. Would I be correct in uh, interpreting it that way? Well, you know, if, we, if we go right back to the, the history of where this relationship with Iran started, it was 1979, the um, Iranian uh, revolution, uh, and the, the current Ayatollah has called Israel a cancer in the Middle East. Um, and therefore, you look at then all, what all the proxies are there to do. All of the, all of the proxies in, a, in their um, foundation documents say that their main aim is to destroy Israel as a state because they don't recognise its legitimacy and then to kill all Jews. That's the background to all of this. 
So, you know, is, is, is Iran wanting um, a regional conflict? I don't think it wants a regional conflict where the United States, the UK and the West are involved and the other Arab nations. We have to remember that um, uh, the, the Jordanians and the Saudis, I've seen reported, um, helped defend Israel this time around. But Iran does want Israel destroyed. Uh, Philip, great to talk to you as always. Thank you so much.